Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Jumma Mubarak to you all. While we couldn't gather today for Jumma prayers, it's still very important that we continue to do zikr of Allah and remember Him a lot on the day of Jumma. Allah mentions in Quran in Surah Al Ankabut, Auz billahi min ash-shaytan rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alif Lam Mim. أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ أَنْ يُتْرَكُوا أَنْ يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ Allah says, Alif Lam Mim, Do people think that they will be left alone because they say we believe and we will not be tested? And then he continues, وَلَكَدْ فَتَّنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ فَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَكُوا وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ الْأَسْبَرِ and we indeed test those who were before them and Allah will certainly make it known the truth of those who are true and will certainly make it known the falsehood of those who are liars. So my dear brothers and sisters, calamities, trials, tribulations are going to happen in our lives at individual level or at a societal level. And these are a form of test by Allah of the belief of a believer. Allah used this word, him, He said, This word fat literally means to clean up and to separate gold from the rock in the furnace. Literally, goldsmith is known as fatan. So if fat is there to separate a believer from a non-believer. In other words, Allah mentions the trials and tribulations as test for the humanity and especially for the believers in many places in Quran. And repeatedly informs us how a believer turns to Allah and makes more dua, becomes more patient in difficult times. And when the trial is over, he continues to thank Allah by increasing his or her ibadah. Whereas those with weak belief, Allah mentions that they may turn to Allah when calamities hit them. When the trial is taken away, they forget Allah and they may actually lose iman and continue doing what they were doing before. My dear brothers and sisters, a big trial has hit the humanity. The entire world is facing the epidemic of coronavirus. And different countries are responding to it by restricting travel, by quarantine, stay home orders and what not. Islam being a religion and a message that came to the whole world till end of times provides solutions to every kind of problems. And Islam did not leave us without guidance on how to deal with such epidemics too. We go back to Quran and Sunnah to seek that guidance. And Prophet ﷺ himself provided that clear guidance to how to deal with this kind of epidemic, Ta'un, while he was still alive. There is a hadith in Sahih Bukhari narrated by Aisha radiallahu anha when she asked Prophet ﷺ about plague, that is Ta'un, the Arabic word. And Prophet replied, Sallallahu he said, it is a punishment that Allah sends upon whomever he wills, but Allah has made it a mercy for the believers. Any servant of Allah who resides in a land afflicted by a plague, remaining patient and hoping for reward, reward from Allah, knowing that nothing will befall him but what Allah has decreed, and if he dies in this state, he will be given the reward of martyr. Prophet ﷺ actually prophesied the plague of, for the Ummah when he was still alive. And it did happen not long after his death, just four years later, when Umar who was the Caliph, when during his Caliphate, the area around the Jerusalem and much of the greater Syria, Sham, Sham at that time uh, it was called, had to go through these difficult times of plague. And when he, when the Caliph Umar who heard about this, he went there to help out with much of his team from Medina. 
While he was just on the outskirts of the city, he was taught by many Sahaba who advised him not to enter the city so that he and many Sahaba would not get sick or would not take this disease back to the city Medina. And after much negotiation, uh, Umar agreed with them. Upon which one of the Sahaba who was the governor at that time of that area, Abu Ubaidah al-Jarrah, anha, he told Umar, Are you running away from Qadr of Allah? And Umar anha, replied, I wish someone else had said this and not you because he loved Abu Ubaidah. And then, and then he continued, Yes, we are running from Qadr of Allah to the Qadr of Allah. Nafiru min Qadr Allahi. So this was a very important point to remember um, when such epidemics fall. Taking precautions and using best judgment is not against Islam. Rather, we will be doing Qadr of Allah. One of uh, the Sahaba, Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, when he heard this conversation between Abu Abeda and Umar, he actually narrated the hadith which neither of them knew and he said i heard messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam say if you hear that a plague is in a land do not go there and if it breaks out in a land where you are do not leave fleeing from it look how prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam advised this scientific phenomena the modern day quarantine procedure in very few comprehensive words about 25000 sahaba died during that plague including abu baida and Muaz ibn Jabal and many uh, who were famous Sahaba and companions uh, of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, during that plague. So what is the lesson for us here? Was this a punishment of Allah for these great Sahaba? Nazibillah. These were the most upright of the people after Messenger of Sallallahu, Messenger of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. However, Allah wanted to give them His mercy and put them through this trial which they faced with patience and were given the status of shaheed. They were successful here and they will be much successful with much reward waiting for them in the hereafter. Allah mentions in Quran in Surah Al-Ali Imran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Am hasibtum an tadkhalu al-jannata wa lamma ya'alimullahu al-lazina do you think that you will enter paradise before Allah test those of you who struggled and test those who are as patient? These diseases, epidemics like this coronavirus are there to make us humble, to make us realize that none of us is powerful. We can see a smaller of Allah's creation, this virus, which we can't even see with the naked eye, has brought the global shutdowns. And the most powerful of the countries like US and UK are facing economic hardships. The virus is infecting every type of race, ethnicity, without any discrimination. Kullu nafsin zaikatul maut is becoming right obvious in front of us. We don't control our lives. Allah, our Lord, is in full control. We should appreciate the fact that life and death are real and we shouldn't be heedless. It is a wake-up call to turn to Allah as this is His test for the humanity. Do you think this virus will not infect the righteous? It will, and this test will be blessing and mercy for those who go through this disease through patience. There is a wisdom in this calamity and it is that we should increase our ibadah, zikr and turn to Allah. Islam teaches us to take reasonable precautions when such epidemics occur. Just as I shared earlier about Prophet's hadith, uh, that sunnah is that we should follow it, wash our hands. The benefit of wudu doing five times a day when we wash our hands and face is huge. Keep tahara, both physical and spiritual. And that is nisfali man, half of our deen. 
As the healthcare officials advise, avoid handshake if possible during these times of flu and respiratory illnesses and the coronavirus epidemic. Follow the instructions that physicians and health department officials are advising people. Self-quarantine yourself. Stay at home, as Prophet said, if you are ill. Don't go around and infect others. We don't have to come to masjid during these times. Think about this. We could be asymptomatic, no symptoms, but we may be still carrying the virus and could infect others, especially the elderly, who can become really ill pretty fast. Law and health officials asked us to stop all mass gatherings and Sharia at this time will approve the guidance of health experts here. And that is the principle of PIC. And that is what is being followed by PIC Council of America and Fukaha all over the world, including by the Paki and Muftis of Al-Azhar University, Masjid Nabawi and Masjid al Ahram in Mecca. And that is the reason we had to stop Juma at our masjid at ICCL2 till further notice comes from healthcare officials. And I am, you know, not very happy to say that, that this may continue during Ramadan. And I'm saying this based on valid forecasting made for Lancaster area by many models that we could see much rise in COVID or Corona cases in next four to six weeks. At the hospitals, including ours, operation officers and physicians are making plans of how we're going to treat a very large number of patients in few weeks, just like it happened in New York City, in Washington State, in Italy, Spain, and initially in China. In these difficult times, you could help yourself and others by staying home, keeping distance from others. Use all precautions as being advised by healthcare societies like CDC and Department of Health. This is a kind of responsibility of the whole community. Preservation of life is one of the goals of Sharia and we should all strive towards this together. And after we have done our part, used all precautions and planned to care for the ill, what else we should do? We should have tawakkal ilallah, depend, total dependence on Allah, that our planning precautions will not save us unless Allah wants. Increase our prayers, make dua that Allah protects us and our community, ummah, and the mankind in general from this disease and its effects. My brothers and sisters, Allah never criticizes if we were not very close to Islam before, but in the face of this disease or calamity, we return to Allah and increase our prayers. That may have been the sole purpose of that calamity, that we leave our heedlessness and return to Him. And more importantly, when Allah brings, inshallah, us out of this calamity, we don't forget Him in good times too. Because Allah mentions repeatedly in the Quran that most mankind ends up doing this. They forget, they go away from the right path when Allah brings them out of the difficulty. When it comes to dua, there are many duas that Prophet ﷺ advise us. One of the, them is, uh, I'll mention here, Bismillah lazi la yadurru masnihi Shay'un fil ardi wa la fil samai wa huwa samiyul alim. In the name of Allah, with whose name there is protection against every kind of harm in the earth or in the heaven. And He is the all-hearing and all-knowing. May Allah protect you, your family, loved ones, and gives us strength to face this trial with sabr, with patience. Ameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.